Welcome back. This is the final video in a series we've been doing on the QRP Lab's Ultimate 3 transmitter, sometimes called the U3. Stick around, we'll put this on the air. If you've been following this series, you know we've been building the QRP Lab's Ultimate 3 transmitter kit that will do Whisper, QRSS, and various other modes of QRP amateur radio communications, including Morse code. In part one of this series, we built this 40 meter low pass filter. Since then, I've built another one here for 20 meters. I have another one to build for 17 meters. These plug into the motherboard that you watched me build in part two. QRP Labs offers a companion kit that allows you to plug five low-pass filters and one more that goes on the motherboard onto a board with relays so that the QRP transmitter can actually switch bands automatically and you can put out a beacon or a signal on various amateur bands. I've ordered that and I'll be looking forward to seeing that come soon. As soon as I put my board together, I was anxious to get it on the air and see what it would do. Not having any way of hooking an antenna up to it, I just took a simple piece of wire and plugged it into the pin that I set up here for the RF connection, and I was ready to fire it up. I applied some power, and the results were far from what I hoped for. Listen for yourself here. Pretty raspy sounding signal, not clean at all. As you can see, even my homebrew Morse code decoder wasn't very happy with the results. As it turns out though, this is not the fault of the Ultimate 3. But listen to that, I was able to solve the problem by simply taking my U3 QRP transmitter and moving it to the other end of the house. Let's take a walk. By moving the transmitter away from the receiver, I was able to improve the sound of the signal immensely. Now we're back in the ham shack. My ICOM is receiving a signal that's actual RF being transmitted by my Ultimate 3 QRP kit out in the kitchen. The decoder you see here is one I built myself. Check out some of my earlier videos. Look for the ones that talk about teaching my pet Arduino to copy Morse code. After a successful trial run with no antenna, I decided to hook my antenna up to the project. Then I decided to give my friend Andy, WA2TND, a call. He lives about 17 miles away in Bellingham. I asked him to turn his radio on, tune it up to 7.114 megahertz, and give a listen. And sure enough, he heard me. He actually heard me. And then I decided to give my friend Peter a call. He lives 81 miles away. I had him turn his radio on, and even though I'm putting out only 180 milliwatts, he had no trouble hearing me at all. In fact, I was able to copy myself over the telephone while I was talking to him. Pretty cool. My experiments with Whisper were pretty interesting too, but before we go into that, let's take a moment to look at the menus that are available in the Ultimate 3 QRP transmitter. Trying to change settings and manipulate menus with these two small buttons on the back of the board are my least favorite part of this project. I'm sure I'll take advantage of the fact that there is provision here on the PC board to install my own buttons which could be more conveniently located. What's particularly frustrating is that there is no way to back up if you enter something incorrectly. You have to go through the entire menu list in order to start over, come back to that item, and correct it. Hans Summers has managed to pack a lot of code into a very small Atmega 328 chip. And as a programmer myself, one that has used this chip, I know what it's like to try to get everything in. It's easy to run out of memory quickly. A user interface can consume a lot of memory in the firmware, and I'd much rather take advantage of the many features and options that Hans has provided in this project. 
Let's take a look at the options that appear in the menus here. There's quite a few of them. We'll cycle through them with the button on the left, and we'll see that it starts out with 16 different modes. I think of them more like channels. You'll see them numbered here in the corners. The first one is numbered 0, and as we walk through them, they go 1, 2. Now, most of these are not set. They cycle through number 9, then A. This is B, and so go all the way to F. And then the next setting here is speed. Some of these settings are used for more than one purpose, depending on which mode you've chosen. So if we're going to send your regular standard Morse code, I've got this set to send the code at 12 words a minute. But if we had our mode in QRSS, which is very, very slow speed, that same setting would mean that we want our dits to be 12 seconds long. That's right. I said dits. 12 seconds long. There's a place to enter the message here. You set your call sign. That's used in some of the settings as well, especially in Whisper. There's a Maidenhead locator here that's used by Whisper. This allows us to switch to extended Whisper. There's the tuning for frequency shift keying. There's a frame start. This determines how often your whisper packet is going to be sent. This is currently set for two minutes. Here's where you set the baud rate for your GPS. There's a calibration routine, a park frequency. Then we have the system frequency here, which is the frequency of the crystal clock. And there's a reference frequency. And then an option to manage backlight. And finally, an option to push the right hand button and it starts running whichever mode you have activated. Now here in mode 0, we have it configured for whisper on 14.0956 megahertz. The lines that you see here mean that this particular mode is deactivated and it won't come on. If I go to mode 1, here we have a transmit CW mode which I would like to activate. So I will take the left button and double click it. Those lines have disappeared, and we can now use the CW transmit mode. This is a CW beacon mode. It's turned off. That's why there's a line through it. Here's another one on a different frequency. Here's the whisper mode that was turned on. That was on, I like to think of these as channel. So it's on channel 5. I'm going to turn it off by, again, double-clicking the right button. That turns it off. Now, a handy thing is that you can scroll all the way to the last item in the menu by simply holding the left button down. So I'll do that now. I push the right hand start button and it's ready to transmit. For Whisper to work, stations all over the world have to be very precisely synchronized. The recommended way of doing that is to hook a GPS up to our board. I don't have that capability yet, so I'm going to try to set my clock manually using WWV on the radio. Okay, to set the time, I'll use the two buttons on the back of the board. We know that the time is coming up on 24 minutes after the hour, so I'll click the right button. That puts a cursor in the first digit and it needs to be a 1, so I'll just click it one more time with the right button. That gives us the number 1. Now the left button will move us to the next digit. We'll get a 9 by clicking the right button 9 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now we'll move to the minutes. I click the left button, and this needs to be 24. So now with the right button, I'll go 1, 2. Once more with the left button, and we'll go with the right 1, 2, three, four. Now, the next time I push the left button, the time will be set. We're going to match it up with the tone, which should be coming up any moment now on WWV. So as soon as we hear the tone, I will press this right button. It's coming up in about 20 seconds. We hear the female voice. Then about 10 seconds before the tone, the male starts. So we'll be ready. Coordinated universal time. Coming up. There. I got it. We're watching the last 30 seconds of a whisper transmission. A complete broadcast runs a little under two minutes. Have a look at the screen while my computer is running the WhisperX software by K1JT. Generally, you won't hear a whisper transmission. The tone we're listening to now is a result of interference caused by the transmitter being too close to the receiver here in my ham shack. You might be able to detect weak voices in the audio. These are coming from a broadcast station that's about two miles from my house. The broadcast station doesn't seem to have an adverse effect on my ability to copy whisper stations. 
When the transmission period ends, the software decodes the samples that it's collected. I haven't been able to figure out why we get three listings. Notice that each one is 60 hertz apart. This doesn't happen with stations that are further away. Even though I've been able to copy my own whisper signals right here in the ham shack, I've yet to be heard anywhere else using my U3 QRP transmitter. I'm hoping that that has mostly to do with some of the timing issues and frequency stability, which should be rectified when I'm able to hook a GPS up to the unit and get all the proper timing. Until then, I'll continue to explore and experiment with the many modes that are available with U3. Perhaps we'll put up some more videos along the way. But this concludes this video for now. Hope you've enjoyed it and hope you come back for more. Thank you for watching. And hey, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.